they refer to it as a paddling pool, which is funny because there is no actual paddling that humans can do in a pool this size. It might be that dogs are paddling in it, possibly. But if you were ever asked for a torch in the UK, they do not expect you to like find the nearest tiki torch from your backyard. They're just looking for a simple flashlight. Welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm an American who's lived in the UK for almost 10 years. And today I am talking about some words that you might not expect are different in British English versus American English. Okay, so before I get too far into this video, I just wanna to say to all of my loyal subscribers and watchers, hello, it's been a minute or two or three. And the reason that I haven't been posting as much is because I have been suffering from something called hay fever. So I'm not going to claim that we don't call it hay fever in the US because some people might. I've always heard it referred to as like seasonal allergies or grass allergies in the US, but here definitely everyone calls it hay fever. And oh my God, I had never experienced any sort of pollen allergy until last summer. And I was hoping that it wouldn't be a yearly event, but it definitely has. So for the past couple of weeks, I have not been able to um, talk without sounding like I have a cold and, and am congested. Um, my eyes have been like closing shut and it has just been all around a relatively miserable experience. I'm glad it's nothing more serious than it is just hay fever, but if anybody has any tips or tricks for surviving hay fever, definitely leave it in a comment down below because like I said, it just turns me into somebody who doesn't wanna go outside, doesn't wanna do anything because I feel miserable and also anything outside has a risk of pollen. So while everyone is like, oh yay, it's sunny outside, let's go have a barbecue. I'm the one who's like shut indoors, like peering out, trying to participate from the window because the second I walk outside, my entire body just like starts fighting itself. So that's where I've been. Okay, but this video is not about my hay fever. It is about some words that I really thought are not as commonly known to be different in the UK and the US. And what I mean by this is there are certain words like the UK call them chips and the US call them fries or in the UK, they call them flats. And in the US, they call them apartments. Like anyone who has seen Love Actually um, is going to have these kind of very basic words down. But I really wanted to talk about just some more everyday things that Americans might not know are said differently in British English and Brits might not know we say something different in American English. And I'm not gonna get into a whole video on like what the right English is. We can do a whole nother video on that. But I am just comparing and contrasting what we say across the pond. So the first word I have for you, and I'm gonna start out with the US word just because I'm American, is sunscreen. So in the US, we say lather up your sunscreen, make sure you have sunscreen before you go outside. They don't call it sunscreen in the UK, they call it sun cream, which I guess makes sense. It is a cream to protect from the sun, but also sunscreen does make sense because you're like screening yourself from the sun. Maybe that one doesn't make as much sense. But anyway, they call it sun cream in the UK and sunscreen in the US. Now the next word is calendar. So in the US, a calendar is something that looks like this. This is actually a Florida calendar that one of my very, very, very nice readers sent me this winter um, because they knew I was missing home. And so currently I'm looking at a picture of Mayaka River State Park. I'm not entirely sure that's how you say it. I've never been there, but next time I go home, I will. Anyway, I'm getting on lots of tangents today. Hi, hello, stay on point. Okay, so this is a calendar. Now, British people might call this a calendar, but also when they're referring to putting dates on the calendar, they say they're gonna write it in their diary. So they use the word diary to kind of mean how an American would say calendar or how an American might say schedule. I'm gonna put that in my schedule. I'm gonna put that on the calendar. They say, I'm gonna put that in the diary. And to an American, this sounds really funny because in the US, the only usage really of the word diary is something that you would write in kind of like 
um, you know, it, as a teenager to like talk about the boys that you like and you put it in your diary. It's something that's like secret and private. Um, you could have a diary just as you go through life, but it's it's about your personal experiences and things that have happened. It's not a schedule. So if someone at work says, hey, are you free for a meeting at 3 p.m. tomorrow? And a British person says, sure, I'll put it in my diary. It's very awkward thoughts go through your head as you're trying to figure out why this business meeting could potentially be going in this British person's private secret diary. Now, the next difference, and this is very topical, is in the US, we typically say we're going to get a shot. And that relates to like the vaccine. So how many people have had their shots? I'm going to get the shot. In the UK, I've never heard anybody say shot. They say jab. You're going to get your jab. You're going to get jabbed up. And definitely this word sounds a little bit funny to me because it seems a bit like whimsical for something that I don't know, it seems to me like very clinical and medical. It kind of makes it, maybe makes it a bit more accessible, but they all say they're going to get their jabs. And in the US we say we're going to get our shot. Now the next one has to do with the kitchen. In the US we say saran wrap or plastic wrap. And I know saran wrap is I think a brand name, but we would say saran wrap or plastic wrap, something wrap. In the UK, they do not say saran wrap, plastic wrap, any wrap they say cling film. So that is another difference. If you are in the grocery store or supermarket in the UK as an American, you will be asking for and looking out for the cling film as opposed to the saran wrap. And again, when I'm trying to compare the two, let's say I'm talking about plastic wrap. Um, plastic wrap, something that you wrap things in plastic. Yeah, that makes sense. And also cling film a film that clings to things. I think both of these are acceptable and make roughly the same amount of sense. Okay, the next one is in the US, we would say movie theater. And in the UK, they would say cinema. So this kind of goes along to the next one I have on my list. So I'll just jump to it right away. In the US, we typically say movie. In the UK, I hear them say a lot more film instead of movie. Now, I'm not saying that they don't say both words in either country. I'm sure if you're a Brit, you may have called something a movie. Um, and I'm sure Americans, you know, we refer, we refer to the film industry, filmmakers and all of that. But if you're inviting, if you're talking about what you're going to do tonight, in the US, we would often say, uh, we're going to the movie theater or, oh yeah, we're going to make dinner and watch a movie. In the UK, I think it would be much more common to say, uh, we're gonna go to the cinema, or you're going to say, oh yeah, we're gonna sit down and watch a film. So it's just different ways to refer to it. Okay, for the next one, we're heading on the open road. In the US, we say truck, and in the UK, they say lorry. Um, and that's another one where I really haven't heard many Brits say the word truck. Americans wouldn't even know what a lorry was unless they had some context clues. I certainly didn't before moving here, but definitely, an American would pretty much exclusively say a truck and not just to mean like a pickup truck, but a long truck. And in the UK, they would call a very long kind of uh, a hauling sort of truck. They would call that a lorry. Okay, another one that can create some funny moments when you're in a cross-cultural relationship and trying to figure out what each other means is the word flashlight in the US they do not say flashlight, they say torch. Now, a torch to an American is like a flaming torch. So when your husband is like, oh, can you get me the torch so that I can see, I don't know, into my computer because I'm fixing it, you know, whatever. He's taking something apart and he's asking for a torch. I'm like, do I, no, we do not, I'm not gonna bring you a, an open flame torch First of all, we don't have that. Second of all, what are you crazy? He meant flashlight. Um, so if you were ever asked for a torch in the UK, they do not expect you to like find the nearest tiki torch from your backyard. They're just looking for a simple flashlight. Okay, now the next one, I need the British people to comment down below and clear up some things for me because I have often seen this type of shoe. So it's very flat. Hence why in the US we call this a flat or a pair of flats or ballet flats. 
I've heard people here refer to them as different things, but I've heard them referred to as pumps. So is this a pump, British people? Would you call this a pump? Would you call this a flat? Would you call this something else? To me, a pumps are like high heels in the US, possibly. Um, so that's another, I'm not gonna 100% say all British people ever refer to these as pumps. I'm just gonna say I've heard them referred to as pumps. And in the US, we would not refer to this as a pump. We would refer to it as a pair of flats. Okay, the next one is back in the kitchen and that has to do with the US word cilantro. Now, cilantro is not called cilantro in the UK, it is called coriander. So that is one of those kind of spice name differences where if you are looking for cilantro in a UK supermarket, you definitely are not gonna find it. But if you are clued in and know that what you're looking for is called coriander here, then you'll be much more successful. Okay, the next differences in phrasing has to do with once you finish a meal and you're asking for something to, I'm trying to say this without saying like the different words that we use. You're looking for something to take home with you after you haven't finished your whole meal. This isn't even as common in the UK anyway because the portion sizes aren't like crazy American portion sizes, but let's pretend. So in the US, we say, uh, take out and in the UK they say takeaway so if they say oh I'm gonna get some Chinese takeaway whereas in the US we'd say Chinese takeout um, and also if you're asking in a restaurant for something to take home we would definitely say in the US like oh do you have any takeout boxes and in the UK you would be like oh uh, do you have any takeaway boxes or can I take this away? So small differences in phrasing, but something you will immediately notice. Now, the next one has to do with sports. So when you talk about, first of all, again, soccer and football, I'm not gonna go into that because everybody knows that Americans call it soccer and kind of the rest of the world, but the UK calls it football. But let's talk about some words to do with the sport. So in the US, we say soccer field or fields. We believe that they play on a field. In the UK, they call it a pitch. So they say, obviously, football pitch, but they are going to talk about the pitch. And they don't mean like throwing a baseball kind of pitch. They mean a, a pitch, which is a bunch of grass that you play football on. Uh, whereas in the US, we say soccer field and we talk about coming on and off the field. And um, in the UK, they will sub people on and off the pitch. So if you're ever watching football here in the UK, you will understand the lingo. Now, the next one is really an unknown one for the vast majority of visitors to the UK from the US, just because it doesn't really come up in your visit. But let's talk about what a soccer player or football player would wear on their feet. So in the US, we call them cleats. So we wouldn't necessarily call them like soccer cleats all the time. You would just refer to them as cleats, but there are different kind of cleats like for baseball and things like that. And so they are the shoe with all the pointy bits on the bottom. I'm not a super sporty person, um, so I won't claim to know much more than that though I did play soccer in the fourth grade and I scored a goal against my own team. So that is pretty much my claim to fame. Here in the UK, they actually refer to them, and I had to ask my husband, they refer to them as football boots. So if you come in asking for cleats, they don't use that term. They're not gonna know what you mean unless they're familiar with American terminology. They are talking about these shoes as football boots. Another one that has to do with what you wear is in the US, we typically refer to it as a swimsuit or a swimming suit or, oh, go and get your suit. And people would know that that usually means, especially given the context of get your swimwear, not get your suit to go to the office. In the UK, they refer to it usually as a swimming costume or a swim costume, which has nothing to do with an actual like dress up costume. It's just the way they refer to a swimsuit. So there's nothing different about it besides the words that they use. So don't expect 
that if you buy a swim costume in the UK, it's going to be somehow more elaborate or dressing you up like a different character like we in America think of as costumes. Okay, so the next word is also topical based on how hot it has been in the southeast in the past couple of days. So in the UK, I have heard a small swimming pool. So I'm talking like small. It is not, it's not a swimming pool. It's just like a small, small little pool. Um, they refer to it as a paddling pool, which is funny because there is no actual paddling that humans can do in a pool this size. It might be that dogs are paddling in it, possibly, but everybody says, oh, time to get out the paddling pool. In, where I'm from in the US, I really feel like we would refer to this as like a kiddie pool. So we wouldn't say paddling pool, we would have them, but we would just refer to it as like a kiddie pool. But the final word on my list for this video is a leash for a dog versus the British lead for a dog. Same thing, they mean what you walk the dog on. Just in the US, we say leash and in the UK, they say lead. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, leave a comment below letting me know some different words that you've experienced between the countries, answering some of my questions, especially those of you Brits out there who can clear things up. And again, things are regional, like in different parts of the UK, they're gonna say different words. And in different parts of the US, we also have regional differences to how we refer to things. But I thought this was a good starting list of just some of the basic words that really 99% of the time are gonna be different between the two countries. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.